oh God, I'm glad I didn't forget that. Um, so where's my share screen? Here it is. Okay, can everybody see that? Everybody see the screen? Yeah, yeah, okay, brilliant. So when we started off um, three sessions ago, uh, we started looking basically at what is community. Um, because that's the very basics, obviously, of community development. So we started looking at, um, obviously, your own expectations of what you'd like to get from the four weeks, an overview of the CDP programme very, very quickly, just to situate why we're, why we're all here. We looked at the types of community. And then we began to look at poverty and social exclusion. And I suppose that brought us around to what is community development and I suppose introducing the task and the process of community development. And I suppose we've been focusing on that particular slide at every, at every session because we try to bring it back to that at every session. And then in session two, we looked at community development, moving from the real to the ideal. So community development has a vision and it's a vision of a just and equal, sustainable society. But we're not there yet. So it's about looking from where we're at, which is a society where there's still discrimination, there is still racism, there is still inequality. There's all sorts of you know, social issues. And we want to move from there to the idea where there's participation, where there's empowerment, where there's collective action. And then we've talked about Power, and I suppose we'd spent a good deal of time on power and on packing power. What is power? Where is power? Who has power? Um, um, and building our power. How do we build social movements? We looked at the powerful people who automatically, you know, have, have power because of their situation or their status. And we looked at the likes of us who don't necessarily have power, but how do we build power from the grassroots up? Um, and what we looked at then about you know what do we do once we've analyzed power so once we have an understanding of power what what do we just let it lie or do we put it into action and then again we look we came back Sorry to community to work. yes uh, Marie is still trying to get in she said it just won't let her connect um so can we trying. send it to her by whatsapp would you send it to her by whatsapp yeah by whatsapp by whatsapp, WhatsApp. Yeah, I've okay. sent it to her, but she's going to keep trying, so. Any ideas, anybody else who might be good at technology? I should keep I trying. To... Did, you, did you try putting the meeting ID and password yeah. rather yeah. than joining the I link? Sent that. I sent that to her. Yeah. Yeah, if she has a laptop, again. maybe use the, the, the browser rather than the application on the laptop. Yeah, she's going to try again, so I'll let you know, okay? Oh, is that... Mm. Okay, if anybody has any bright ideas, let us know. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'll just go back to this. Um so I uh, so yeah, looking at a community development approach, which talks about thought and action. So the thought bit is the analysis, the understanding, but it, we we try not to leave it there. We try to put it into, into action. So we talk about community work avoiding thoughtless action. So that's spelled wrong. So ignore that. I'll I'll fix that before I send it around. Trying to avoid thoughtless action and actionless thought and move towards thoughtful action. So action that is based on analysis on an on an analysis. And then in session three, which is our last one, we looked at power and institutions. We looked at the uneven distribution of power and also the uneven distribution of poverty and inequality. We looked at the power within our own communities and within community development projects. And we talked about being able to see ourselves at all levels of community development projects. So, for example, you wouldn't have a Namal uh, Muslim women CDP without, without being able to see Muslim women very, very visibly in the community development project. You wouldn't have an inner city Dublin community development project without being able to see uh, the wide diversity of people um, reflected in the community development project. That's what we talk about when we talk about community development projects. And then we talked about social change and we're going to be building on that today, the role of community work in building collective, collective action for change. And there we have it again, a community development approach avoids actionless thought and thoughtless action and strives for thoughtful action. 
Okay, so I'm just going to pause there and see if there are any questions about any of that. You can recall most of it. Yeah, okay, brilliant. Okay, so will we go on? You okay to go on? Okay, great. Share. Okay. I have a clicker, but it's not working for me. Do one thing. Um, okay, so I thought we might just have a look at the social change slide again, and um, because I think that's that's that that is an important one. So when we were talking about social change, we talked about the catalysts. What makes social change happen? And um, and sometimes it could be like in Ireland, it certainly was the demise of the power of the church brought about quite a lot of of change, the empowerment of women brought a lot of change, education, you know, better education for, for people, communication, globalization, particularly our membership of the EU brought quite a lot of change. Um, and then the role of crisis. So when we look at COVID and the amount of change that happened as a result of COVID and during COVID happened really, really quickly, the church scandals in Ireland also, you know, was a catalyst for change. And then the climate crisis that we're in at the moment is going to be a catalyst for change. Oh, and yeah. then we took... Amory said, will you let her in? Oh, is she in the waiting room? Yeah, she just texted me. Okay, wait till I see. Um... So I didn't think I had a, I didn't think I had a waiting room and I don't see her. Um, how would I let her in if I don't see her in the waiting room? Well, I should just Does anybody know? It's saying she needs to let me in. So okay, I need to let her in. Okay. Um, um do you know what I could do is send her an outlook invitation, couldn't I? Probably, yeah. I'm gonna try it that way. It's that's what she's just texting me. It's saying it won't connect. Okay, I'm gonna try it this way. Just send her I'll, a, I'll, a, I'll a direct. Her on, I'll phone her on my phone and let her listen. If she's any questions, that'll be handy. Yeah. Okay. Tell her that I'm tell her that I'm trying it one more time, will you? Yeah, no problem. Uh, just send her Fine, she'll be able to listen to it. I'll put the phone up to the it was still though. I, I'll just send it, I'll just try it this one more time. Will you just tell her to look out for um an outlook invitation there? And maybe that, that might work because that would be an individual invitation. Okay, I just sent that to her. Okay. Like continue, she let me know, okay? Okay. Um sorry, that's that's um it's not the presentation. Okay. No, still not the presentation. Close down presentation and start again. Here we go. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so I suppose I just wanted to remind you that that 
social change rarely happens by accident. Something externally happens to influence it. Sometimes it's as a result of a grassroots movement or a groundswell. Um, sometimes it's really, you know, really small things. Um, but it, it is all about the collective bit. No one person is a grassroots movement. It's when people come together and they start saying things like, that's not right. That needs to change. And that's how social movements start. So don't ever be worried if a social movement starts small. Sometimes they start small, but they grow. If there's enough support for it, they grow. And the other thing I just wanted to remind us of was that social movements are, it's, it's on a spectrum. Sometimes they're very small things and sometimes they can be, and invisible sometimes, and sometimes they can be big and very visible. Um, and legislative change can be either a cause or an effect. So, you know, a, a social movement can result in legislative change or sometimes legislative change causes a social movement. And then I'll just go on to this one before we stop again. Um, and then again, just to remind us of the community development place in all of this. That, that again, that mantra, community development approach avoids action as thought and thoughtless action and strives for thoughtful action. So it's not just enough to have the understanding or the analysis. You also have to have action associated with that analysis. Neither is it enough to have action, you know, just random action. That action should be based on analysis, whether that's research or, you know, I, I, whatever it is, it, it should be based on that. So then in terms of how we build that analysis, critical education. And I know ICON are absolutely brilliant at starting very small, starting, well, and I know Amal, you do this as well, and most of the projects do, you know, maybe it's a coffee morning. That's absolutely fine. You get people in the door and then you begin to have the conversations and you begin to build that critical education. Um, it can be formal, it can be informal, but always collective. You know, it's always about the conversations. It's never about just being, you know, just being, just having the coffee. It's about the conversations. And we move then from that to consciousness raising, you know, having, having conversations about autism and about people with autism who are in precarious housing. So it's about building that consciousness raising. And then it's about creating the conditions for empowerment. And it's not that anybody empowers anybody else. It's about creating the conditions for empowerment. It's about saying, yeah, yeah that's, again, that's not right. That needs to change. So you move to collective action. And that's based on recognizing the inequality and power of dominant ideology. So recognizing that there is inequality and that there is a powerful dominant uh, more than one ideology. And finally, then looking to influence social structure, social change, structural change from a grassroots uh, approach. So I'm just going to stop for a second and just see, because we know that, you know, we all learn more from the conversations than anything else. So any Comments about that? Or experiences that you'd like to share? Uh, I would like to ask a question. Certainly. Sorry. Yeah, so my question is, uh, what is your definition of empowerment in this case, in the community development context? What is our definition of? Empowerment. You're very low. I mean, I say that again. You meant empowerment. What oh, empowerment. Mean? So what's the definition of empowerment? Well, empowerment, it's it's not that there's a definition of empowerment, but there is an understanding of empowerment. So empowerment talks about people moving from feeling powerless. That's happening all around me, but I can't do anything about it. And moving towards a situation where people feel empowered to take change, I can go and speak to my TD. I can go and represent my community. And it's not like I don't empower people, you don't empower people, but we create the situation, we create the conditions for empowerment. And that is essentially bringing people together. That is essentially bringing people together and having conversations. And that's how you create the conditions for empowerment. But if you would say, how do you do that? Like, 
part of it is creating a, a, a nice environment. Like nobody is going to feel empowered if they come into a meeting and everybody is like, you know, you know, like that or, you know. So creating the conditions for empowerment is creating a welcoming, a, a welcome for people, having a smile on your face, looking to see if people are on their own and making sure that they feel included. So you go over and you talk to them. Food is brilliant, even if it's only a few grapes in the middle of the room or, you know, there's different you know, one stage in a project I was working in, we used to have curry and conversations. So we used to, you know, bring people in our pizza parties, you know, bring people in, have pizza, have curry and start conversations. So it's about starting those conversations and then knowing, and this, this would be your job as a professional community worker, knowing where to bring those conversations. So say, for example, the conversation around marriage equality started as a conversation, started as, you know, like, people can't everybody get married. Not that, you know, a lot of people don't want to get married, but they want to have the right to get married, so should they choose? And moving towards that, to building the grassroots movement that, you know, eventually brought legislative change. So it is, it, it, it's about that. I don't know if that answers your question, Yes, it does. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So for Amal, for example, it's about, you know, working with the women that come into the coffee mornings or the drop ins, looking, looking to start conversations. You know that some of those conversations are going to be tough conversations, but knowing then how to work towards, you know, addressing those situations. So knowing, for example, that if the area of domestic abuse comes up, that you know that women's aid is there, that, you know, there are support services there, but also knowing how to begin to influence social change in relation to domestic abuse, where, where it affects Muslim women and others. So it's about having that analysis and having and having those contacts very often. It's it's knowing who to talk to um, very often. Any other questions or comments or? No, okay, we will move on then. So I thought we might just look at inequality um, for a second. And I suppose social movements and community development have at their core an ambition for equality. And equality is a core value of community work and an essential goal in the creation of a just society. And sometimes we can sort of gloss over inequalities. We can say to ourselves, ah, no, the women's movement has done great work. You know, there is marriage equality now. Ah, should done and dusted. Well, we have to remind ourselves that actually it's not done and dusted. And I was at the, uh, at the launch of a piece of research that UCC did for a project that we're involved with, with the Women's Council last week. And it showed, like it showed very graphically using the data where um, inequality in terms of carbon, it was about, it was about climate justice and the inequalities in terms of carbon, carbon emissions um, is very, very stark. Most carbon emissions come from rich people and they come from men and they come from very, so it really was, it reminded me, do you know something? Inequality is still very live. So I just put up those two little pictures there just to kind of remind us. Any comments on those pictures? Did you get to see them or will I put them up again? I think uh, in the pictures, it's meant to, challenge that equality is not enough because we always look for equity, which is um, looking at the outcomes of, of what you support them. Like you want them to all reach the, the same outcome if uh, and putting in mind that they have different starts or different experience, experience rather than giving them all the same support that wouldn't be enough for different people to reach the yeah. same goal. Yeah. There's always this conversation about equality and equity. And I, I, I think that people who use the word equity really cling to it. But I was reminded recently that we can't lose the word equality either because equality is the word used in the legislation. So whether our understanding of it is, is you know, the outcome 
we do need to keep the keep using the word equality because it is the equality is used in the legislation, it's used in the policy in all policies. So we have to keep that. But you're dead right when you say that treating people people equally is not treating people the same. Yeah. Anybody else? What did you think of the, the pay gap one? It took me time to understand that this is a boy and girl. Yeah. 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 And it's interesting because when I worked for the Women's Council, we kind of delved deeper into the gender pay gap. It's not so much a gender pay gap, actually, as a mother pay gap, because until people start having children, the pay gap is, is almost non-existent. It's when people start having children and the pay gap grows the number of children you have. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, yeah. Anybody else in any of those? Would you like to be an elephant or a monkey or a goldfish in this situation? A tree. Okay, <laughs> the tree. <laughs> Mind you, the tree probably fall from all of the activity. Yeah, yeah. Or the bird, yeah, it's it's like, and it's very, it's very, I think, indicative of the Irish education system where there's just one size fits all, and that's, and you know, if there is any special education at all, it's sort of, it's you know, it's it, it's a tag on, you know, as opposed to something that's core to the education system, yeah. So when we talk about your know, community work then and social movements and equality, we're actually talking about, we're talking about positive action. Um, now, positive action. So positive action, sometimes people think, well, it's giving the job to a woman instead of a man, or it's giving a job to a traveler instead of a non-traveler. But sometimes it can be, it can be, it can be different. It can be looking at the fact that traveler outcomes in education are woeful. Like absolutely appalling because they're expected to fit into an education system that doesn't reflect their own ethnicity or their culture. So therefore, positive action or the intervention is where we have developing at the moment a traveller education strategy. And positive action or intervention would say that there is a traveller, uh, there's a scholarship for members of the traveller community to study at third level. That's positive action. That's an intervention to fix something that is not going well. What do you think about positive action? Yeah, I think it's it's the what means positive is not that it should solve the current situation or problem, is that to prevent it from happening again, to work on the grassroots reasons. So in, in the case of the travelers, and instead of giving the traveler the 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 job, uh, even if it's not he if they're not very qualified for that, just to fill the gap or to mark that the uh, we did we we are inclusive and all diverse, and it even happens with Muslims as well. Sometimes I feel that we are giving a fund because they need to work with all categories rather than we are the we came up with the brilliant uh, idea, but. If you if you work from the beginning on in improving their education, improving their um, um, qualifications and all of that, they will at the at the end they will represent as as qualified and maybe uh, more qualified when they apply for a job or then they will earn the job rather than just filling the diversity gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Like, why do we have funding for an LGBTI group? Galway why why is there funding for an LGBTI group I mean it's um I suppose it's trying to make more more like systemic change as well like bigger change I suppose is what I think of when I think of positive action um like it's trying to actually change the system rather than trying to get, for example, LGBT people to assimilate into it. Yeah. 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 It's same, it's the same with all communities that, you know, that are marginalized by society. Yeah. 
it's about saying to society, actually, it's not about us changing. It's about you changing as well. Um, and I think that's why we that that's why we have a group in Galway funded to do that work, because the outcomes for members of the LGBTI community in terms of suicide rates, in terms of lots of different things are unequal. They're disproportionate. The same with the traveller community, the same with a lot of, inner, you know, if you look at inner city Dublin, you know, what are the outcomes for an awful lot of the people there? And that's why we have the likes of ICON, you know, as an intervention to support the people whose outcomes may not be as good as the norm in society without without intervention. So positive action is a very important part of, of community work. Where have you seen this? Where, where, where would you have seen this in action? Any examples? In terms of the elections that are coming up now, any examples? I think you can see it in the diversity of the way the country has changed and companies have changed, the workplace has changed. Um, plus, I think, as you say, with the LGBT, I probably will not even saying that right. When people see people in positions, whether it be the colour of your skin, religious aspects, disabilities, I think it encourages more people to go forward. Well, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. So it it just give, give out a positive um, vibe as such. Certain companies, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, we still work for one specific company and probably 40% of the workforce had autism because the focus of them and it was like, which was very positive for them. So they encouraged people regardless of yeah. I yeah. would say skin colour, religion, yeah. disability, anything. So I think it's got to do with how to see, you know that saying, monkeys see, monkeys do. So if you yeah. see someone think, oh, well, I can do that. Yeah. I might have... See it. And you, if you see it, you can be it. Yeah. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. 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 There's that's... a couple of those old mantras, you know, that are that are really useful. If you see yeah. it, you can be it. I mean, yeah. if you don't, if I, if a girl doesn't see any doctor that's a woman, she's thinking, oh, doctors aren't, you know, women aren't doctors, they're men. If you look at the elections coming up, remember we did the sort of power analysis and we looked at um we looked at the Doyle, for example, and we said, yeah, no matter what, I mean, there's no doubt about it, you know, mostly men. There is, it's just a fact, and they're mostly men. And there's, you know, a good few women in there, but mostly men. So a positive action that's in place to address that is the gender quotas. Now, the gender quotas only go as far as telling each political party that they have to have such a percentage of women standing. Not that they have, so, have to have such a percentage of women elected, but just a percentage of women standing or they don't get the funding they get. So that is an example of positive action. Whether or not it goes far enough is a different thing. Now, we could also um, say that's inadequate. You know, it should go further than gender. Um, and we should. But at the moment, it's just it is just gender that, that we're looking at. Another example of positive action, whether it was meant or not as such, was the fact that there was never a traveller elected to the Senate or the Doyle in Ireland. Or, or maybe there was one, actually. So as an example of positive action, the Taoiseach has the right to appoint a number of people to the Senate. And he appointed, at the time it was Micheál Martin, he appointed um, Senator Eileen Flynn, who's a member of the traveller community in, in, in Donegal. He appointed Eileen to the Senate. She had st she had st she stood for the election and she just missed out. So he appointed her to the Shannon. So that is another example of positive action. But he wouldn't have plucked Eileen Flynn out of the ether. He selected her because she had had she she took the decision to stand and she just narrowly missed out. So, you know, sometimes it can take a bit of bravery as well, you know, and and, and just trying something. Anybody else around positive action? Or are positive interventions sometimes as opposed to positive? Because I think positive action, people say, mm, positive interventions. No? Can I move on? From 
from oh. from our experiments in the Salam project. I don't know if I mentioned before that um, it it started as a research about anti-racism, especially Muslim anti-Muslim hatred or uh, Muslim racism, and the outcome now is a training that it's now um, giving to the local authorities. So this is a positive intervention because it's not only uh, doing a research and then printing it and saying, hey, this is the racism happened. It's finding a solution that will prevent it later. So, and it's the first time that Muslim people train local authorities. Yes. For me, yes. it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, really, really good. Um, and, and it's similar to the traveler intercultural training that traveler communities do. Um, I'm sure that you have LGBTI awareness. I think I, I think I know that you have that type of awareness training. So it's about saying to the majority, in this instance, the local authority staff, you just have to, you know, you just have to. It's not about making space. It's about making change you know, to include people. It's not about accommodating people. It's about including people. Um, and, and part of that is building their own knowledge base. Yeah. Anybody else? And will we move on? Okay, we will move on then. Okay. So positive action, just to give you the sort of definition, definition. Um, Positive actions are specific actions to eliminate, prevent, or remedy past discrimination. It can go beyond legislation to equal treatment by promoting substantive equality, which is the equality of outcome, which is what you were saying there, Nira. It's about, it's about that substantive equality. For example, by addressing structural or systemic disadvantages caused by poverty, racism, sexism, etc rather than merely aiming for equality of opportunity or preventing discrimination. So sometimes when people talk about, I'm sure everybody has access to education. That's the, that, that is equality of opportunity. Everybody has the opportunity to access education. But we don't have substantive equality, which is at the other end, everybody comes out with the same education. So you go in, usually, you know, quite equal. You don't always come out equal. So that's what we talk about when we talk about substantive equality, which I think you were you were using the term equity, but I think it's the it, we're talking about the same thing. So positive actions are remedies. They're remedies against things that happened because of racism, sexism, poverty, etc. So they are remedies. They're not always long term, although sometimes they can take a long time to remedy. Um, so in terms of, you know, positive action and community work, it's about strengthening communities. It's about getting involved, linking with like minded people, you know, amplifying voice. You know, I, I see that word quite a lot at the moment, that amplification. It's not to say that the voice isn't there, but it's about saying when there's more voice, it's louder. It's about collective positive action for social change. So it's not just for one person, although, you know, sometimes it is. Eileen Flynn is one person, but it's one person that's representative. So it's about bringing about. So hopefully the next time, you know, we'll have more travellers within the doll and, and the shell because people have seen her um, be that person. So it's about the collective social change. It's about challenging inequality together. It's about hearing good stories and people getting the right information, sharing positive experiences as well. And it's about word of mouth, bringing people in, boosting people and sharing experiences and, and learning. And I think we've already said that, that, you know, where have you seen positive action in things like gender quotas? Um, the measures can be temporary, representative democracy. There are challenges to positive action when you when we live in a in a society that has positive that has participative, or sorry, representative democracy. But a positive action in relation to that is participative democracy. So do you remember the other one, the other cartoon that we had, is you know vote for me and I'll speak for you, and the the the, the other people are saying, well, how about we represent ourselves? That like community development gives people the chance to be involved in decision making. And that's an example of participative democracy. Um, things like special needs assistance in schools, smaller class sizes, behaviours in schools viewed differently, you know, that children are not being bold, they're actually acting out because they're having, because the stress is getting to them. Um, 
It's about community work pushing and being a positive action for social change itself. It's about voting rights for residents. It's about structure to support people to vote once people have citizenship. It's about rec the regular, for example, the MRI, the, M the Migrant Rights Centre of Ireland, the MRCI, campaign for regularization of undocumented migrants you know that was a wrong and that was righted by social change and um, it's about employers we, we did an example of that there um so just to bring it back again to community work so community work i know you're going to kill me now but a community work is a developmental activity comprised of both a task and a process so the task is social change so that's what we're talking about. This is this is why we're involved in community work. We're not involved in community work um, just to, you know, just for the sake of it. We are involved in community work to bring about social change. Um, and that social change is about equality, social justice and human rights. But it's about more than the task. It's about the process. It's the how we do this in a way that makes sure that people affected are included, that they get to participate in decisions, that their experiences inform the work and that they feel empowered and energized as a result of their involvement. So I'm just going to stop there again and see if that makes sense to people. Any comments? Come on, throw on, throw on the mics and have a bit of a conversation. Anybody? Would you say that that's why you're involved in community work? I think that like this kind of definition of it is really important because I think we were talking recently of how a lot of people think what we do is like run groups for gays, but it's not just about, you know, um, providing services, but actually like making social change. Yeah. And what's the difference, do you think, Sarah? Um, well, I suppose the purpose, I think, the purpose and like say, you know, well, yes, you know, we might run a craft group, but why is it to address the need? Is it a, a need identified, which is maybe isolation? Um, and then kind of maybe using using those groups to kind of identify further issues or um or needs of the community um and then also getting that community engagement so yeah. that then we can say well this is what while we may be filling the gap I suppose temporarily it's how do we create social change and how do we yeah. lobby and how do we use this information to better the yeah. I don't know, rambling yeah, yeah, no, 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 you're not at all no that's exactly it like it is about sometimes it is about running groups for gays it is you know because you want to get people in the door and you have to have a hook to get them in but it's not about that it's not about staying there so you start where people are at that's another one of the community work mantras you start where people are at and if where they're at is just wanting to feel less isolated you bring them in and you you do the craft work or what whatever the, the pottery there you have tearing as a free teacher there <laughs> but, yeah, but 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 it's about the motivation the motivation the tool might be the craft the tool might be the pottery but the motivation is to get people talking so the first conversation you might have is why do you feel isolated why are you isolated you know, why is why do you feel isolated when you, you know, where's your community? You know, um, is it right to feel isolated? Do other people feel isolated? You know, so create the, those, those solidarities between other people. Is there something we can do about isolation? You know, so that's the stream of the conversation. And it's the same no matter what. You know, you bring you bring Muslim women in for a coffee morning and that's brilliant. But the motivation is to start them talking. You know, you know, what why do Muslim women need their own space? And they do need their own space. Why what why do we need our own space? Is it right that we need our own space? We'd like to have our own space, but should we have spaces in other places as well? You know, so it's about having those conversations with people. And as you do, you you build that critical consciousness. And eventually you're saying, well, is it right? 
And could we actually change that in some way, um, some small way? And some are some changes are small and some changes are big. Joyce, you have your you your mic off. Do you want to are your mic on or mute off? Do you do you want to come in? Um yeah, I agree with the two girls there. Um I think once you get somebody in the door and once you get them talking, regardless of what it is, I mean there's a lot of things you don't know about communities. Like what I call, we have people coming in and it could be just in general conversation that you say, do you realise there's a, an autism group of a Tuesday morning, which they didn't know. And they either have a sister, a brother, or somebody belonging to them that has autism. So they'll go yeah. along. Other things. Um, bingo's gone, gone on in the area. Clubs for kids. So it's just getting them in and realising that the services that are available there and hopefully that when they go outside, someone will say, oh, I didn't know that existed then. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people would say that having a sensory, a sensory Santa at Christmas time isn't community work. It's classic community yeah. work, yeah. which is yeah. what Icon did last Christmas. Because you get to the you get to the parents and guardians and all that through the kids. So, you know, they bring the kids along and then they start talking and they realize that they have a connection. And then they start the conversations about, did you know that or, yeah. you know, that 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 sort of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. the autism group are, are part of the community, so why not? Um, yeah. Everyone is part of the community, regardless of if anything yeah. that's going on in your life. So if you know that there's a group that suits you yeah. and there's one out going around. Yeah. yeah, like sometimes we think of community as a solid. It's not actually, it's more like a jigsaw, no. you know, and there are different pieces that make up different, different communities. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, Anybody else? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, regarding the isolation feeling, uh, what I have noticed uh, in Ireland uh, since I arrived in, uh, five years ago, that uh, the level of isolation is very high among uh, different groups like we are living in, in different Iceland. Yes, there is some facilities that we can do, but at the end of the day, uh, you cannot, you know, uh, like we, I am from a minority group, uh, about religion and also nationality. Yeah. Mm. When we are talking about uh, space, like we have different cities and different towns, different villages, there is no space that uh, bringing us together like for example about election we we have no idea about the election and how it is working no information season for people who are speaking the, the english as a second language or immigrant like us um uh, when it comes to activity social activity you cannot find you will find the clubs like teachers clubs um, uh, different clubs like here i found some some place uh, that woman muslim women are meeting but they are just uh, a specific group and not include everyone um uh, there is something in the system that when i found it uh, i was you know i took my education long time ago in usa but there the community work i found it more practical and involve everyone when they are using uh, the normal community centers uh, uh, in for ev for involving everyone by not only by celebrate celebrating their uh, their days like uh, only using the celebration days no they are also using it in bringing people together to do things together at the same time bringing uh, the information but i am be i believe of doing things together rather than grouping the people in different you know background i know that the space mm -hmm. is very good like having uh, for every group their own space to discuss things but mm -hmm. when it comes to community work we need leaders mm. to take the initiative and bringing those people together regardless of their nationality regardless of their background or religion and uh, it's uh, it's highly needed from the uh, local community to involve by inviting neighbors uh, new yeah. arrivals we miss that a lot you know wherever i like i just moved to uh, to look uh, to um, uh, castle knock so I know no one, I'm trying hard, although I am that person who is open for the community, saying hello, good morning, trying to find where I can meet yeah. my community, 
where where I can see them, where I can share something with them. Um, it's like uh, every every house is an island itself. But the community work is really challenging. Yeah, you're dead uh, right. Yeah, yes. because I think that you know people have retreated behind their doors and behind their phones. Um, and it can be very difficult, which is why then it's really important that you have the likes of, you know, yes. the, um, the Amal Women's Association, etc. Yeah, go on, Nira. And as a community leader, I will I will just send you my phone. I will connect you with different people in Kassanok and Blanchestown because I know many Arabic families there. Mm -hmm. And I promise I try to provide... Um, an Arabic awareness session about the election online so everyone can 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 oh, view. Sounds great. Yes. yes. And there we so are. We there's your connection. Yeah, there's absolutely there's your connection. And it's interesting that it is mostly women that are involved in community work. Well, like if we did we did that analysis around gender and community work, you would see an awful lot more women. So maybe we need our own gender quotas. So poor yeah. Tiernan won't be the only man in the room uh, a, a lot of the time. But I do think it's important that it is both men and women. It's about all religions. It's a, But sometimes it's about like if you think of throwing somebody into the deep end of a swimming pool without teaching them to swim first. Oh, yeah. So to the teaching to swim first is sometimes creating spaces for different communities. So the LGBTI community, the traveler community, the Muslim women's community, so that they can, you know, discuss their own issues, have their own spaces, so that they can participate in the in the deep end, which is in the, you know, the whole of society, the whole of, of community. But sometimes people need their own spaces. They need to feel comfortable. They need to feel that I don't have to explain myself in this group because I share connection with this group. I know the traveler community would say that all the time. They need their own spaces where they don't have to explain what it is to be a traveler so that they can gain the confidence to then participate in other spaces. Does that does that kind of make sense? Yeah. This so it's not about keeping is, people isolated. Yeah. yeah, this is this is the best of practice actually. This is the best of practice that you have you have to know your 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 own skills and also to be also skilled enough to have such communication. But most of us, like myself, I was a leader in my community before, before moving here. I, I used to be in Meath and I did a lot of community work there and uh, volunteering work, uh, involvement, uh, supporting immigrants, uh, uh, working with the uh, refugees, uh, part from Amnesty uh, for the right of... Uh, so for for missing some rights and fighting for it, so um, I was involved. But when I moved, I changed my environment. I found it uh, very difficult to rebuild again. And I I, I yeah. told myself, how long I will do that? Yani every yeah. time. Knock our door. Just knock Amal's door. Just come to us. <laughs> that, yeah. that would be step one. Yeah. You have plenty yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a little bit of karma going on there, which is absolutely absolutely brilliant. But I think what you're you're speaking about there. Manny, is for some reason, for one reason or another, you've become displaced again. You know, you've moved from Meath to Castellog. So suddenly you're looking around and saying, well, this wasn't Meath. Why isn't it here? And an awful lot of people feel that, you know. And not, so it is then about, re, you know, about finding the likes of Amal yeah. or finding other other groups like like there was a culture in Meath, you know, and then and then becoming involved. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. OK. We will go on. We're kind of just at the last conversation, really. Um, so I was just going to pose a few questions. Question one is what change you would like to see in your community and then what needs to happen for this change to come about? Put the questions in the chat so you can see them. So what change would you like to see in your community? Uh, do we answer directly or do we type it down? No, no, answer directly. Uh, okay, yeah. So I'm just talking here from personal point of view. And yep. uh, personally speaking, I think the change I want to see in the Muslim community is that women would have more self-confidence and put themselves more out there and, you know, like fight for the things that they think are really important in their daily lives. So self-confidence is an issue then for Muslim women? 
Yeah, that's what yeah. I personally notice. Yeah. I think that yeah. self confidence and being outspoken is really important criteria. And what do you think needs to be in place for that to happen? Uh, I think it really depends because here it's a matter of um, definitions and also background. For example, um, I think it would be good to have to to have women, you know, speaking about the like really hot topics or things that are going on beside their homes and families. You know, like for example, bringing something totally new, like maybe I know some people would shy away from politics because I think it's very complicated. Mm -hmm. Maybe the small introductions or basic introduction can be a good idea. Um, can be also, for example how to bring down the cost of living. If, the, if certain women can share certain tips about cost of living or how to manage their finances to be maybe a good idea. I mean, there are many, many things out there. So I'm just saying things. Yeah, yeah. So what you've described there is you've described an issue. You've described the reasons why the issue exists. And then you have described things that you're going to put in place to address the issue. So that's that's a, that's a really good, a really good example. Yeah. Um, Sibisisu is saying that she can't speak because she's in a place that she can't speak, but she'd like to see a just community where everyone is, is respected, regardless of their skin color, gender or financial status. Yeah. And maybe you could type in what you think needs to happen to achieve that. What do we need to do to bring that change about? Um, anybody else? Sinead, um, what changes? Oh, go on, Nira. Sinead, go first. It's okay. Sinead, what change would you like to see in your community? Um, For me, for because my involvement with ICON is in regards to the autism group. So for me, I would like to get the Northeast inner city diverse, that people will understand that some children do have autism and to respect the parents. I see it myself. I deal with it myself. And even when I go to Aldi, if she's ha if she has a meltdown, sometimes I have to bring her to Aldi with me. People look at her as if yeah. to say, like, oh, she's a little brat. Why yeah. is she throwing tantrums? Why is she throwing everything at her mom? She done it to me at McDonald's last week. She threw her drink at me because it wasn't the right drink. Yeah. So for me, it's it's more of a making people aware. Yeah. Like to approach me or to approach yeah. people. Yeah. Right, I understand your child may have additional needs. Is there anything that I can do to help yeah. you? Yeah. Instead of standing there looking at the people and blaming. looking at the parents and, and yeah. judging the children. Yeah, 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 yeah. So even the simple tip, like don't assume that a child is bold or a parent is yeah. inadequate. Assume maybe your assumption, maybe your starting point should be this child cannot help what's going on at the moment. Yeah. And this parent, you know, might need to. So you go up to the parent and say, can I help? You know, can I help there? Um, can I pick up the cup? You know, do you need napkins to wipe yourself down? You know, you know, so don't, it's it, it, it's the starting assumptions really need to, to change. Yeah. yeah so we, we came up with like, um, it's an educational tool, the jigsaw that we, that the, the group had come up with. So in the coming weeks now, we are going to be going to say local schools, local offices to pitch this jigsaw to see what ideas come back from people, what's people's ideas of having children with additional needs or even adults with additional needs. We're getting a new um, girl that's coming to the group and she's 21. She's not yeah. actually a parent. She's actually 21 that has yeah. additional needs. So it's it's just to, to try and educate people yeah. of yeah. how to how to deal with this. Like I, I've even had it myself, the, my, my eldest daughter is not, not my eldest, my middle child, she's 13. She was on yard duty and the, the ASD class was out in the yard and some, someone in second second or third class under and goes, imagine having a brother or sister like that. Like it's yeah. just, some of the kids aren't too educated on it. Yeah. So for me, it's more to bring the education to the community. Yeah. To see and make people aware yeah. that this is in the community and these children, but the children with autism are amazing. Yeah. That they're verbal or non-verbal, they, yeah. they they teach us an awful lot. Yeah, I've learned an awful lot from the women 
I've learned an awful from the children, but I've learned an awful lot to de- to try and deal with stuff at home myself. Yeah. Getting ideas and giving feedback. And I think this is what these community groups are all about. Yeah, it is exactly. It's exactly that. It's that collective, that collective piece. Joyce, do you want to, and I'll come to you near, I haven't forgotten, but just because I know Joyce has to leave. What change would you like to see? Yeah, um, I have to say I agree with Shadea there a lot. Um, I think the only way it's like everything would change when people talk. <clears throat> that's going to be any change in any system in Ireland. Um, do I think we have come forward a lot? Yeah, I do. You can see an awful lot of change in the past 15, 15 years in Ireland, I go as far as to say, in, in every aspect of society. So I do think we're on the right road. Yeah. Like every yeah. process, it's going to be slow, but yeah. I do think we are getting there. Yeah. And that's the thing, like change, change is slow. And sometimes it's only when you look back at like the last five, 10, 15, 30 years that you actually see change change has happened would you ask Anne Marie to send me her phone number Joyce and I give her a ring and we can just have a, a quick chat about what we did today yeah, I will because I know she was very enthusiastic yeah she, thanks for that she yeah. really sends her apologies and I, I said I'm heading yeah. to the den so yeah yeah good luck with that yeah good luck with it yeah see but see so is saying that <laughs> thanks very much in a lot of yeah. That change can be brought about by empowering the weak to stand up against any form of oppression. Now, I would just slightly challenge the word weak there, because Thank if you're you. a person living with oppression, it's not that you're necessarily weak. You become weakened. It's it's the situation weakens you. So if we could say that the change could be brought about by empowering the people who are weakened are marginalised by oppression I think that would be that would be a really good way to to say it and knowing that their voices count absolutely and that they have a right to be heard that way the government and other institutions get to hear where the oppressed of society need improvement for instance uh, empowerment of multicultural children in schools to know they are less they are no less important compared to children of other races absolutely yeah yeah really good way of putting it Neera I'll come back to you um I would see all Muslim women in maybe in Muslim women and men in Ireland speak English, speak, read and write. Because anything can become after this. This is yeah. the minimum basic. Yeah. This is a barrier. Yeah. A huge one. Yeah. Yeah. And to achieve that, that I don't know, because I know that there's a lot of centers that give English classes, but it's not enough. To make it obligatory, like a part of getting a citizenship or part of getting uh, asylum seeking to take the course and take and 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 uh, take an exam and make sure that you know basic english because yeah. when it's obligatory people are more keen to learn and uh, they commit and then this would fix many of their problems mm. and you're living in an english country so you have to learn the language yeah this shouldn't be optional yeah and I think rather than, you know, it, it carrot and stick, I mean, I think that the carrot would be to encourage people to let, to tell them that, you know, if, if to explain that English is absolutely critical to all facets of life and to really encourage people to learn English. Um, yeah, I mean, the obligatory thing. From yeah. my experience, we encouraged, we encouraged a lot, but it doesn't yeah. happen until it's obligatory. And yeah. If you do, if you make it obligatory, then make sure that it's easy to access. It's that you give them everything that it could be online, offline, in many yeah. places, different, might diverse teachers to make sure that people understand. Make it easy, but then make yeah. it obligatory. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Tiernan, how would you like to see changed? Um, I was thinking a lot about um, kind of. I know it was mentioned before, but kind of trying to get our community, I suppose, more like politically engaged. And I know there's a cohort of the community that is very politically aware and involved, but I think the majority still isn't. And I think, I suppose that is around like awareness um, and education on even like how, how you register to vote and how elections work. Um, what are local elections? What are general elections? Why does yeah. it matter? Um, 
and, I and don't we, vote for that one down the road who fixes yeah. the potholes. <laughs> and kind of if you look at their party like, stance on gay rights, yeah. I think a lot of people are unaware of um certain politicians' opinions on LGBT rights. Um because it's not like being spoken about in most of their, you know, hustings or um on their manifestos and stuff. But um I suppose again, like we're part of a at the moment we're part of a social media campaign, like a register to vote campaign online with Galway City Community Network. So that has that's like good in a way. I mean it's it's an online campaign, so it gets information out there and that's all, more just about drumming up how do you vote how who is eligible to vote um and things like that coming up to the elections but um yeah i suppose that's a that's a broader thing but yeah 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 and and the other amina what would you like to see change and i'll come back to you then sarah I don't want, I don't want every time we go to Tierney, we go to Sarah, just mix it up a little bit. This is the same Amina. She has two devices. That's all. That's Amina. Yeah. No, there's two Aminas. Yeah, same person. Phone and and laptop. No. There's your Amina from Amal. And then we have Amina from... from Amani. Not a man. Oh, 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 lads. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm bad. Amani, I am yeah. Bad. Uh, you know, and uh, when I think to my name, they usually call me Amina because a more mm. popular name. But it, uh, my name is Amani. <laughs> oh, I can see. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm going to play my glasses. I'm going to play <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the I and the A. <laughs> Amani, Amani, my. Apologies. Okay. What would you like to see change apart from people um, yeah, to read your the, name? The, the most important thing for me is um, to bring the community together. Uh, is the neighborhood, you know, community centers. Uh, this yeah, so this is this is very important that they have to meet each other in different occasions and to mix from different background. Uh, I am I I like to have you know those group. I am not very interested in a group is for a specific nationality, specific language, specific, you know, background. I would love to see that we are mixed because we used to be mixed in everywhere. We are in Palestine, you know, we are so mixed. Although we look Palestinian, but we are not all of us from the same background, different religion, different background, different ethics, so different even clothes. Different uh, everything, but I love to see that you know, like different color of flowers, community uh, centers that it is really active and uh, involving, and uh, from there we can start you know how to teach people about different things. Uh, what I see in the community center is that they are only concerned about specific group, and mostly most of them old people. Yeah, yeah. not uh, really involve everyone. Secondly, I want I would love to see people greeting each other. Culture of a greeting, we are missing that now a lot. You know? if you yeah. not start a greeting, uh, they are even wonder why you are greeting them and what you want. So back again to the education through TV, through social media, through influencers, to tell the people greet, greet your neighbor, smile, stand, see how, say how are you who you are and uh, how I can help you. This kind, this culture of back to the, you know, to the nature of human, because we are human, we love to be, com- to, to be welcome, you know? Yeah, yeah. To, and to, I mean, Irish people respected. are always good at that. Like thank, you know, thanking the bus person, you know, the person driving the bus. You know, yes. we, were, we were always like that. But I just think, yeah, people retreated behind their phones. It's just such a pity. But I can see that you will be a great asset uh, working with uh, with the Mal. And I think that's just brilliant that you've made the, the connection. Sarah, what would you like to see changed? Um, I think something that would be really great would be more intergenerational um, engagement within the community. I think it's really important for young people within our community to be able to see role models and like happy, successful, um, you know, uh, LGBT people. Because I think in family situations, you might be the only LGBT person in the family or one of few. Um, and it's kind of hard to picture your life or envision a life 
a long and happy life, I guess. Um, and I think as well for older people, um, to be able to have that same, because a lot of a lot of LGBT older people don't have children, um, or grandchildren, to be able to have that sort of connection, um, to younger generations and also to learn from them because yeah. things are changing so fast. Um, yeah. General Kiernan has been on a few projects focusing on intercultural, um intercultural intergenerational um, intergenerational projects in the past and I think it's really really great and yeah so what needs to happen what, what are you going to do about that I suppose look for things that different generations have in common you know um and w- yeah and try get people in the room together yeah. so just to create an opportunity yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. And you have the space. I mean, I think you're 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 dead right, Amani, when you talk about spaces. And we spoke about this yesterday at a social inclusion forum thingy, the, the, the importance of spaces where people can come together. They're absolutely critical and they're, you know, they're not everywhere. Where where you have one, it's brilliant. Um, and we know the success, for example, of having a space in Donegal for the migrant community, the success that's been. And obviously Galway is getting up and running again for the LGBTI community. But the importance of spaces, and I know ICON is crying out for additional space, but at least you have the office, at least you have a sort of a presence on the street. And I think they're just so critical to community work because you, you can't really do it without it. OK. OK, so we've come to an end. Um, and thank you very much. I'm just going to put this up and then I'm just going to do a quick. So, yeah, it is. This is our final session. I wanted just to remind you of the certificates um, that we will be sending out to people who participated, the continuous practice development certificates from um from AIEB and ourselves and Community Work Ireland. I also would like to invite you to join Community Work Ireland, which is very easy. You just go on the website, cwi.ie. I'll just put it in here. Um, and you'll see join us and you'll be kept up to date with lots of different activities and lots of different, oh, two eyes. That's sorry, the two eyes in there. There we go. Um, so to do that, but maybe just before we finish up, maybe just to look for, you know, one sentence of reflection over the last four sessions Um, one sentence that you think, you know, I learned something or I didn't learn something or, you know, something, just a bit of a reflection. So I will call on everybody. And if you don't want to speak, that's absolutely fine. But if anybody would like to to kick us off. Uh, for me, the part of the process and task, even that we repeat it every time, but it's good. It's good to focus on this division or this categorization. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, can I say something? Of course you can. Uh, yeah. So I think the best part for me was how well you explain it. A lot of um, the things related to community development like very simplified explanation because I could think of myself, even if I tried to explain it, I would really say a lot of terms and people will get lost in it. <laughs> so I think it's really, the way you are conveying the information was really amazing. It's okay, thank you. Sibu uh, Siso is saying that I learned that there are many facets to community development. And so it's important to choose your corner and bring in change in small, in, in small little ways. It matters. Oh, that's that's a really good way of putting it. Good. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Uh, my question about this, uh, you're talking about the, uh, how to join that organization. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there is uh, like application to to be involved or something. I, I'm really I'm not familiar. There's with. a very simple form. So so Community Work Ireland is the organization I work for, CWI. Okay. And so we support the community development projects, but we're also a member organization. So you can join Community Work Ireland and basically you just need to put in your details. You do need to say, you do need to, it is a tick box, but you do need to tick the box to say that you agree with our values. 
and oh. our values are the values we have been talking about over the last few, four sessions. They are values of equality, justice, etc. So if you identify with those values, you're very welcome to become a member. So if you become a member, you go on our database, you get lots of information about different things, um, different events, different opportunities. Mm -hmm. So if 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 so have have a look at it on the website. And if you think it's for you, you're very welcome to become a member. There's no fee, there's no charge. Okay, but like what, 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 when I am searching, I found only uh, community work education. I didn't find, uh, uh, or, or it is organization, this one, right? Yeah, it's www.cwi.ie. Uh, oh, okay, community work mm, organization. Okay. So if we just put that in. Um, Anybody else with a reflection? Um, I was thinking a bit more about um, kind of the catalysts for social change and kind of the importance of um, when something happens to like use it um, to make change. I suppose, especially like now that we have the center here and more engagement and more people coming in, um, even like on a local level, not necessarily a national, just like even in Galway, um, and like that every every kind of catalyst is an opportunity for social change and to engage the community and, and to empower them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now Crowley calls them moments. I don't know if you know Neil Crowley, he used to be the head of the Equality Authority. He calls them moments. And yeah, you jump on the moments. You mm -hmm. don't let the moments pass. And sometimes you don't have the energy. But like moments are important because they don't come along every day. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. that, Tiernan. Sinead? Um, like the, the girls were saying, yeah, your knowledge and the way you delivered the, the four sessions was brilliant. And just to say thanks to you, and it's given me more of a passion now to continue to do what Grace. I can do for the community and what I can. Yeah, great. Great. Yeah. And, yeah, and we'll definitely have to get more men in the room as well. Yeah, so that we're, you know, it's 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 not... Tiernan is the only man in the room. It's, it can be difficult. Yeah. yeah. Sarah? Um, yeah, I just thought it was all great, to be honest. I really like your phrase about um, thoughtful action instead of um, thoughtless action or actionless thought. <laughs> Mouthful, but I think it yeah. really encapsulates a lot of like the reasoning behind what we do. Yeah. Yeah, such important work. You know, it really is. Somebody said to me recently, it's not brain surgery. It's not brain surgery, but you know something? It's critical to people's lives. It can make a real difference to people's lives. So yeah, it's really important work that you're that you're all engaged in. Is that, was that everybody? Yeah, I think, I think it was. Okay, so it's just falls to me to so say thank you so much. I will be sending out the certificates to, to everybody. I know I said on day one that I'm going to be sending you out the copy of the standards, and I absolutely am. I just haven't got them yet. They're in they're in the house of my colleague who lives on the other side of Galway. So we just have to arrange to get them. But as soon as I do get them, I will be sending them out. And there you will see the task and the process and, and the whole lot. Um, and, and hopefully you can, you can use it as a sort of a touchstone every now and again. And I know hopefully I will see you all. At, I know I'll, I'll see some of you. I know I'll definitely be seeing some of you, but I hope to see um, the others as well. And I hope you know that you keep involved in community work because that's, that's really important. So thank you all so much. Um, yeah, thank you very much for all of your attention. And as before, I'll send out the recording and the presentation. It might not actually be today, it might be early next week, but it'll be it'll be coming to you. Right, thank you so much, everybody. And do you still um, need the, the house address for the cert or will you send I it do, but to I'll email Shannon and I can? I I will the, the search will probably come to you by email. I might actually print them out on you know a fancy paper and send them oh, with okay. the report. But I'll email everybody. That's what I do. All right, perfect. Yeah, yeah. All right, Thanks lovely again. to meet you all. Take care. Thank Bye.